Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark, the Land Geek, again, Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek of FrontierPropertiesUSA.com and TheLandGeek.com, and I'm really excited for today's, for today's podcast because instead of having Duran today, we're going to have Jeff Axton from TammyLand.com, and Jeff is uh, a student of mine, and I thought it would be great to just get his perspective and his background on what it's like to work with me and learn from me, but it's not all about me. We'll also talk about Jeff and what he likes about this business, what he doesn't like, and, and get like the inside scoop on what it's like to work in this business and not necessarily have done it for it as long as uh, I've been doing it and as long as Duran's been doing it and, and what it's like to really kind of you know, start. So, Jeff, welcome. Thanks for being here, buddy. All right. Well, thanks for having me, Mark. I appreciate being here. So first thing, Jeff, let's talk about what you, what is your day job? You, you manage the fire station or what do you really do? Yeah, I, yeah, sure. My my real job, I guess, is what you call it, is um, I'm actually a uh, captain in a fire department here in Massachusetts. And and uh, just pardon my, my accent, I have a heavy Boston accent. So um, most people ask me, where are you from? You know, but right. uh, anyways, I I do. Uh, I'm a firefighter, and and we have odd schedules, so uh, we have a lot of time off. And um, you know, I've always been into real estate, so uh, that gives me some time to do other things. And uh, real estate, like I said, is my um, I guess I don't know if you'd call it part time, full time, or or hobby, but uh, it might be a mix of all three. Right, right. Yeah. See, I I always get insecure when I talk to you. By the way, because in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, so, you know, he's buying and selling land and saving lives. I'm just buying and selling land. Like, I should go volunteer or do or do something else. Like, did you save, yeah, any, did you save any lives today? Like, what what is that like? <laughs> it's rewarding. You know, it's um, it's it has its just like any other job. It has its ups and downs. There's a lot of political involvement. So that kind of brings the job down. Um, there's a lot of downtime. There's a lot of hours of boredom. And uh, but when you do make that that save or rescue or you just do one a good two good things every so often, it makes that job worthwhile, you know. And uh, and it pays, you know, it pays okay. It's not you're not paying getting paid a lot of money, but you're not you're not poor either. So it's um it's it's a you know, it's a good, it's a good thing. It's, it's, it's very rewarding. But like I said, you, you go into situations where you won't forget some things, you know, and so um, it's very challenging too. So. Right, right. And so, okay, so tell me, how did you get? I know you started with Jack Bosch, is that right? Is that yeah. how you got in the land business? But before that, were you doing real estate, real residential real estate, or tell me how you got started? Yeah, in my, um, I'm 42. And uh, in my 20s, uh, late 20s, I, um, I actually bought a two-family house, and that's where I, I moved into. And, uh, and I lived in it for a while. Then I, then I bought another two-family, and then I just kind of fell into real estate. I, I liked it. I liked the cash flow that was coming in. And um, so, I, so I bought a bunch of multifamilies, and then when the market turned, uh, rents started coming down. Uh, it really didn't make sense anymore to be in this business uh, owning multifamilies. And then um, I started getting a family. I got married. So my time, I didn't want to spend at these houses anymore. And uh, the the amount of money coming in wasn't that great. So I, I got out of the multifamily housing business. Uh, I became a realtor. So I was around um, real estate for a while doing that. But I didn't like working for someone else each time, each transaction, you had a different boss. So I didn't like that. Uh, I still have my license, but I didn't, uh, I don't practice as a realtor anymore. And that's pretty much, I did a couple rehabs. And uh, again, it, it, I was successful with it. I, I got my education. I, you know, I, I, I learned about it, 
did a couple rehabs, but I found most of my time being spent at those houses. And I was like, geez, you know, I, I don't want to spend my time at a house. I, I want to do something in real estate because I really love real estate. But I need to do something from home because, I, you know, I have children. I want to be home. I want to be with my wife, my family. And I was just around the Internet one day searching for just anything real estate and passive income. And somehow land popped up on the Internet. That's kind of how I fell into it. Right. And I said, geez, Jack Bosch. I said, that, that looks like an interesting thing. And I bought his material. And I've bought a lot of material, by the way, over the years. Right. I bought his material and I I consumed it. And I said, all right, let me let me give it a try. And about, a, I don't know, two months after I got the material, I, I bought a piece of land up in Maine and um, ended up selling it. I made a couple thousand dollars. I'm like, wow, this, this really works. Right. <laughs> Some of the stuff. <laughs> right. I, it, it 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 all a lot of it works, but it's some of it's more difficult than others, and sometimes it depends on the economic environment if uh, if it's a good time for a certain type of thing. But um, this this like I said, it it worked, and um, I continue to do it for the last for the last I've done this now for three years, but I did his method for about two years. Right. And um, out of those two years, I'd make one really good hit. And um, it would make it worthwhile, but it, but it, what it, what it got down to though, after about two years, it just, I, I just wasn't getting. It was just taking too much time. I was spending a lot of time on the phone with, with uh, people calling in and asking me about uh, selling their land. So I'd end up talking to people all the time and not getting enough deal flow. Right, right. So, um, so I was like, geez, okay. Well, well, Jack's, Jack's products is, are working but I'm not making as much money as I wanted to make I, um, uh, just as it is just like a little part-time job and I was putting in a lot of hours when I started this and uh, and that's when I, I I actually saw your product I think was was what you were selling a piece of land on eBay I think right and it, and it, and it came with the education education to um, if if you bought your land, you you give you get I get to speak with you for twenty minutes or so or something like that. Right, right, right. And that's how I I got involved with your investors toolkit. And then um, from there, you know your your course was different than Jack's. And I and I told you the first time I spoke with you, I said you know I I've been in this business, but I need something something that's going to tweak it to make it work around my lifestyle where it doesn't take as many hours in the day uh, to get deals in. Right, right. Yeah, so, yeah. so that's that was the difference. Right. So, because this is my podcast and it's all about me, what, right. what, what are the differences between Jack Bosch's courses and my investors toolkit? Would you say? Um, well, both of your courses uh, have the basics in it, so that that's great. Either course would teach you basics of of what a tax deed is, what a tax lien is, how, you know how we how we purchase land and the different ways of of Buying land, so that in itself, they both are teach the basics. Your course is more direct, though. Um, your course is okay. We write an offer right out of the gate, and uh, I learned this from another investor as well, who's doing the same thing, but with houses. Right. Uh, your your method was bang. We send out, you know, for instance, my business. I, I send out, you know, between a hundred and three hundred offers a week. Right. You know, and it goes out offers right away. And people like uh, other investors, they, they say to me, they, geez, what do you mean you send out an offer? How can you do that? And I said, well, why can't you do that? You know, and that, that's the way you taught us. Right. And, uh, and, it, and yeah, you don't get as many calls coming in. Uh, let me tell you what Jack does. Jack's product, you send out the same thing. You send out 300 letters, but he'll, um, they call you back. So those, those people that call you back, that's when you talk to them, you make an offer. So on your method, you skip a step. You you actually go right to the offer instead of waiting for the call to come in. Right, right. Because I don't. I personally don't want to be in the appraisal business. And I don't want to talk to them if they're just trying to get an appraisal from me. I want to talk to sellers. I don't want to talk to tire kickers. And I find that's much more efficient way of doing business than, you know, just 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 getting a lot of activity for the sake of activity. <laughs> Oh yeah, it helps out a lot. It's it's a uh, streamline my business instead of spending. You know, I still spend probably I spend about ten hours a week on this business, and okay. it's because I it's because I enjoy it. It's not because 
you know, I don't try to make this, I don't try to get this done in, in six, seven hours because, you know, I just don't want to do it. It's every day. I mean, today was a great day. I, I woke up in the morning, brought the kids to school, I had the morning off, and I spent two or three hours in this business just having my coffee and, and you know, I had I sold a few pieces this morning and, and I'm buying a piece today. So it's, you know, I went out running. I came back and did some more land business. So it's the way you teach it, it it's – I do it because I enjoy it, you know. And it's, right. It's, it, and it's, yeah. The, the life you can't argue with the lifestyle. Um, you know, I mean, like Duran today, he's making money. He's at the beach with his family. Yeah. I mean, and you know, this morning I took the morning off. I was I was with my daughter for a school function, and yet, you know, I come back and there's money in the account from uh, yeah. from the note business. I mean, there's there's no better feeling really. But yeah. Uh, so so it jives with your lifestyle. But right. when are we going to get to the point where you can say, okay, I've got enough money coming in from notes and active income on land flips that I can, I can quit firefighting? Or is that, right. or do you love firefighting? I, I I love firefighting. I've been on for almost twenty years now, and the wow. in the the um the the magical age is is thirty two years at fifty five in in my state. Okay. So uh, a lot of guys do 32 years at 55. My goal is to do 25 years in the fire service and, you know, just continue doing these land deals because a day like today is is just like, oh, how can you? <laughs> I, I do love firefighting. I love helping people. But, um, you know, after a days like this, you know, being around for the kids, it, it makes you, you know, question it, saying, geez, what? Right, right. What am I doing here? This is this is pretty nice, you know. But uh, yeah, but you're. I mean, you're lucky though, because most people they're in a job they don't really love, and it's not that rewarding. And um, this is a way uh, to kind of get out of that that situation. Now, I'm not I'm not suggesting somebody you know buy the investor's toolkit and then start you know and then quit their job. Um, I didn't do that. I. I I worked my job for 18 months before I finally quit, but you know, but at least there's, you know, a uh, yeah. a pot at the end of the rainbow. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think um, I, I think really the 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 um, reason I stay with the fire service, I do enjoy it, but um, sometimes it's like you know what? Hey, that retirement at the end of the, I put so much time in, I'm almost there for retirement anyway. So it's like yeah, I'll put a few more years in there, and then. Um, just continue this land business the rest of my life <laughs> because you can do it at any age. There's no, there's no age limit and it's, uh, it's not difficult. Right. It's just, it's all about, um, being motivated to do it every day and, uh, and keeping up with it. And just like, and I think I've mentioned once before, you're actually, you mentioned it to me, um, this business does, it is sometimes, you know, sometimes you don't have a good week, you know, once in a while you might not sell something this week. Or you might not sell it for what you want, you know. Right. Uh, but the following week, all of a sudden, you sell four of them. And it's like, geez, wow, this is, you know, so it's, you know, it, it is a weird business. Right, right. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, that's business. I mean, any, right. business, any business goes through that. But um, so, let me, so let me ask you, what do you least like about this business? This, you know, I, I wrote down a few, I was, I was, I wrote down a few things and, um, there's not many dislikes about this business. Uh, I'm a positive person. I like I like talking to people on the phone that are happy. I try to make people happy. The there's only you know that really the only there's a couple things when we have once in a while you'll have a, a disgruntled caller that come in who you know you make a low offer. Oh and, yeah yeah. And they call in, but you know I don't have I don't speak to them. They leave it on a voicemail. So I don't that, that's you know to me that's you know, that's not really a dislike, but it does happen. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've got I've gotten those calls where you know, they're like Mark, I can't believe that is my <laughs> offer on this piece of property. <laughs> I bought this ten years ago for thirty five thousand dollars. You're yeah. offering me this? This is a complete insult. I hope something really bad happens to you and your family and your family's family. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it's like they take it so personally. I'm like, look. You haven't paid your taxes. That's why you're getting this offer. Right, it's not right. like you're advertising to the world, I don't value this property anymore. 
But now that you got the offer, you don't like it. So, right. I mean, I, I, I chuckle at that. But, I, you know, look, I screen those too. Because yeah. they, can, they, can, they can definitely ruin your day. Oh yeah, and and you know what? Sometimes I used to call them back when I was when um when I used to talk to uh, customers all the time, sellers all the time. I used to call them back, and they would get so mad at me before I even spoke. They would just swear at me everything, and I you know I'd throw it back at them. You know, yeah, my offer is low. Well, how much are you looking for it? And then they they just be quiet. They don't say anything. Right. <laughs> and they like they don't know what to say for me. They're like you know. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, well, you know, you called me and you're upset. Well, how much would you like for it? Maybe we could do something different. Right. And, and they, they can't answer. And so uh, sometimes there's a lot of things behind that. You know, maybe there's something going on at home as well, or maybe caught them on a bad day. Right. Right. But, uh, I, I know got, yeah. I've received offers in the mail on my land. And if it's ridiculous, I just throw it away. I don't even, I'm like, all right, let's, you know. Okay. No, <laughs> right. I would never call someone back though. Right. Right. Just, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. So another dislike, I guess would be, um, I don't like, uh, I'm not crazy about, uh, filing and doing paperwork and all that stuff, paying, you know, uh, keeping up with the taxes and doing the seller financing. I love collecting the checks, but, um, just the paperwork part of it. Yeah. But don't, yeah. Paperwork. But don't you use a, don't you use a system, an accounting system and, in a software yeah. system to, to I mean I, I spend like five minutes a day doing it yeah I I, I do I, I I use a system now I, I use have a little software that I use my seller financing they work great right but, um, you know that's I guess that's it's a minor dislike you know it's not really that bad but it's it's just you gotta you gotta keep up with um you know just filing and, and things like that and it's all online now I have everything on on my uh, in Excel and different folders and what have you but Right. It's just, um, you know, I, for me, I'd rather be just doing deals and on the phone, you know, but um, right. it's 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 not that bad of a deal. But uh, and then um, I think, like you said earlier, like any other business, you're going to you're not going to um, you buy that piece of land and you're not going to make your first year. You might not make five or ten grand right off the bat. So sometimes it's time consuming, you know, with, you know, you, you're waiting and waiting for that good deal to come through. You know, so you're waiting, and then finally it hits, and it's like, wow, this is great. You know, I love this business. Right. So at that anticipation or the waiting part. Um, and sometimes, you know, you get you get anxious, and you'll buy something maybe you shouldn't have, or you'll you'll, or the spread's not big enough, and right. that that can be disappointing. Yeah. But, see, and, and this and this is the reason why I think the membership site is so important, because once you start doing this, I think it's important for like you and me. And some other students to have like these weekly mastermind sessions, so we can always talk about. Okay, I'm looking at this deal. What do you think? What's your experience with it? That's going to add so much more value and gives give a uh, a student who's getting involved in this for the first time so much more insight into you know these deals that are completely you know foreign to them and all and and remove all that anxiety. Like, well, should I buy this? Should I buy it at that price? Like. In this area, and I, I think that would be really, really valuable, um, and uh, that's why I'm doing it. So, uh, you know, that's that's another thing. So, if anyone's interested in that membership area, you gotta call, you gotta contact me directly. But um, that's why we're gonna do that. So to remove that 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 anxiety when you first start. Oh yeah, that'll that'll be huge because I I mean I remember Jack Bosch's course he had a message board and he would answer it every week or two and it was like I need answers now I, I, I need to talk to someone and that was that was one thing that you know he didn't really develop his he didn't have a, a, a weekly um, you know talking together or, or podcast what have you but that would just talk to someone and, and listening to people communicate about uh, about the land business would help out huge I mean I, I know I call you once in a while or, or we talk and I, and I have a few other Land investors that I know, and I, and we chat every few weeks, and we're we're always running things all over each other's. You know, hey, what would you do in this? What would you do in this scenario? You know, how's it going for you? You know, and and how's the market going? So, it, talking to someone all the time, and I've been doing this for three years. I don't think I you you need that support. Right, right, yeah. I mean, I think the investors toolkit is a great base, but I think once you get to the you need to get to the next level, you have to have, you know, a weekly mastermind type of thing going 
because the market changes so quickly. And you, I mean, you don't you want to be a you you don't want to be a stationary target. You know what I mean? You want to be yeah. a leader, so yeah. no one can copy you, and and you can stay up to date with technology and techniques. You know, this is working. This marketing is working, as opposed to you know three months ago this marketing was working, but now this is working better. And constantly innovating, and constantly experimenting, and and trying out different things because the market's always changing. Yeah, and, and the tools out there are just getting better and cheaper. You just have to use them, and uh, so I think I'm really excited about that that aspect of uh, of the business. So, what do you like most? Uh well, definitely the freedom. I love the freedom. Uh, you can work on this business in the middle of the night, uh, in the morning. I know when I started out doing this business, I was working uh, four or five in the morning. I'd, I'd wake up real early before the family woke up. And I would spend three or four hours on it, and I loved it. And then um, now I usually, you know, I, I my kids are in school, so I spend between nine in the morning till about noon. I'll work on this, and then sometimes at night I might answer some emails during the day. I have my smartphone, so I'm constantly with that. Um, but I love the freedom of the business, and I love being my own boss. I love that. that yeah. That's yeah. that's huge. The seller financing deals. I know, you know, Kiyosaki. Kiyosaki. Reading his book, and oh yeah, uh, this, this is Rich Dad Poor Dad, Robert yeah, Kiyosaki. Dad, yeah, yeah, Rich Dad Poor Dad. I know reading his book talks about seller financing, and I'm getting more seller financing now from just the little land deals than I was from my rental properties, and with with no headache. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's like right. Night and day. If you have a rental property, especially if you have like a, a small one, a two, three, four family. And you look at the numbers you're bringing in them at the end of the year, and you say, "Okay, I'm making say after everything's paid, I'm making three or four hundred dollars a month." Right. And you, you look at, you know, I don't know. I've, I've been doing this three years. I have probably I don't know twenty 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 pieces that are in seller financing right now, and I'm making well over that just with the seller financing deals. And I and I don't have any tenants. It's just a couple clicks, <laughs> you know, and. <laughs> it's great. So I, I'm just in slowly building that base up. So, you know, by the time my kids are in college and, and I'm retired, I'll have a nice, nice big chunk coming in that'll pay for that. You know, so that's that's uh, one of my goals long term anyways for the sell of financing. And then um, the, the business is fun and it's exciting. It's uh, the exciting part is, like I said, the anticipation. You're like every week you're sending out offers and you're getting you're getting accepted offers each week. But not every accepted offer is is actually a purchase, you right? Know? So you get excited, you see it, you're like, oh, I, I know any accepted offer is gonna be a good deal because I know I priced it right, and then um, and then sifting through it, and then once you find one of those ones that you um, really do good at, it, it's real exciting, it makes you feel really good. It's almost like a, it's almost like a drug, you right? Know? Right. Oh yeah, I've got to tell you the story. So I sent out an offer on these uh, Humboldt River Ranch properties. Yeah. Guy comes back and accepts it, right? Yeah. I, you know, I have Janie start doing the due diligence. She emails me back and says, hey, look, uh, there's like $1,000 in back taxes on this property. Like they owe assessments, they owe back taxes. And my, my offer was like less than that. I'm like, okay, tell them to call me. So she, she emails him back and says, you know, call Mark directly and he's going to explain the deal. So I, so I talked to him. I'm like, look, Frank, I, you know, I don't want to insult you here, but I can't even offer you anything now because of this. This has got to be taken care of first. He's like, okay, I'm going to take care of it. Uh, I'm like, look, you know what you should do is you should just dump this property. I've got 40 acres in the same area with no association fee. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, it's easy. I'm like, it's only, you know, $200 down, $200 a month. We have a contract. He sent his in his in his down payment, and it's great. Like wow. now I got a I got a sale out of it. Wow. And uh, and I'll probably get his property. But he's but right. for this point he's like I'm going to keep the property. I'm going to pay yeah. all these taxes. So, but you know that stuff is can happen too. It's great. Right. Um. If you, yeah. So I, that that part I I love about that. Yeah. I I love the same aspects as you. The lifestyle, the freedom, being your own boss, the passive income, the active income, the fact that it's fun. I, I agree with you. Yeah, and there's one other thing in, in, in 
and everybody, anyone starting this business, that just to let you know, there is there is very very little competition in this. I mean, yeah, I you know, I, I don't know. I, I I know of. I mean, I don't know them all personally, but just doing this for a while, it seems like there's only a uh, I don't know a few, a few dozen that are full time that I know of. Yeah, um, yeah, it is. And and the other investors that I've spoken with think I'm crazy when I. Tell them I'm I'm doing land, and they say I don't know how I, people really buy land. They say, right? You know, actually, my relatives say that. You know, although my 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 parents invest with me a little bit, they you know my brother is just like I don't understand it, Jeff. Like, you know, how can you how can you number one how can you like it? Number two, you know, who buys these things from you? you right, know? right. And then uh, you know, same at the fire station. The guys they don't understand it. I, I tell them a little bit about it, but uh, <laughs> they have no idea. Right, and because nobody thinks of land, everybody thinks of houses. Houses are sexy, apartment buildings are sexy, you know, triple net properties are sexy. Land's not sexy; it's it's land. And right, um, unless you're a land banker or a land developer, then you don't. People don't think about this, which is great because it's more for us. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. that's fantastic. So, if someone was starting in the business today, what advice would you give them? Uh, let's see. If someone was starting, well, first you have to get educated. So you 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 got to get the course. You got to get you got to talk to Mark and, and at least get the basics down. You have to do that just because of um, it, the trial and error thing. I mean, you start on your own, just going on the internet trying to figure it out. I mean, even now I'm still getting more educated as time goes on and, and the market turns. So you need to get educated. Number one, um, you don't need much money. You need, you know, I'd say a few thousand dollars, probably a couple, one or two thousand dollars, just to get started, so you can buy that first piece of land and you can send some offers out. Right. And then, um, and then, yeah, you, you, it's gonna be, it's that first piece of land you buy, it's gonna be nervous, and I still get nervous buying sometimes, you know. Right. But, um, yeah, not, you know, get educated, I guess, and uh, save up a couple thousand dollars to get yourself a couple pieces of land. And um, and keep keep uh, keep at it. Your you, you heart has to be into it. You know, you really want to. You have to put your time in. It's not a lot of time, but um, and you have to be patient with this business. It's not one of those. It's not a uh, get rich quick. It's just it isn't one of those. Not saying you can get rich. You definitely can, but uh, you have to put a little bit of time in because you have to learn the business. And once you learn it, it's like I said, it's 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 awesome. Right. 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 Yeah, it was funny because I got that email from you the other day about that 40. I really like that 40. I think you're going to do really well with it. But I, I don't think I don't think it's a cash deal. I think that's more a terms piece probably. Yeah. That, well, that was a 40-acre in, in Humboldt? Yeah, 40-acre in Humboldt County. And uh, the, the uh, current owner tells me there's a gravel road to it. So I'm going to send someone out there and uh, take some pictures for me, see what, see what kind of access it is. I'm buying it either way. But um, – yeah, it's 40 acres, and um, you know, on eBay they go between four and eight thousand. It looks like. Right. And then, um, but I'm not gonna go that route. I think I'm gonna, like you said, I'm gonna go for a term deal on that. And um, haven't decided a price on that. I want to get some more pictures. It's all staked out. Uh, he's late on taxes, but it's a hundred dollars. He's late. On, I'm like, <laughs> right. you got to be kidding me, you know? So uh, no, I. I I was uh, I'm I'm excited about that one. He has he has some other parcels as well. So I'm working some other deals. He has three other parcels, one in California and two in Texas. So I'm working working some some deals with those as well. So uh, oh, that's great. great. So yeah. So hopefully it turns out to be uh, really profitable. I love you know I do I do mailings. You know I, I it's a little bit it's one of the strategies Mark talks about, and that's basically um, I know there's tax auctions and those are great. But uh, I like to do my business from home, and uh, right now I key. I like to focus on mailings. That's what I do. Right, right. Yeah, I mean you got to do. I think you got to do both. Really, you got to do. You got to go to the auctions. You got to do your mailings, and you got to look at distressed sellers too. Um, you know, don't ignore like big companies that might have a huge land portfolio and see what you can just pick off. Yeah. Because those are those guys are great. They're unemotional, and they just look at it and say, "Oh, okay." These are no longer useful to us. Let's, we'll, we'll just get them off the books. They don't even care. It's, it's it's fantastic when you find those deals. Oh, I'm sure. All right, so that's that's really good advice. 
Yeah, and one other one other um, advice I was I was going to say is um, the first year, I, I, if you keep at this business, you know, like I said, five to ten hours a week, just part time. Keep your other business. Keep what other job you have. You're gonna you're gonna hit. You're gonna make something that for first year. You're gonna make a ten to twenty grand hit. That's I, I did. I've done this every year, and I've always made one one big deal each year. And um, the last three years for me, ten to twenty thousand on a deal is, is a good hit for me. Right. Uh, so that first year, I I spent it on a. Uh, I took that profit and I bought a house actually out in, out in Arizona. It was a rehab, and uh, I rehabbed it and I put a person in it and uh, sold it on terms. And so they, I'm like the bank now. But I used all my cash to do that, and I do receive a monthly payment. But I wish I had kept that for the land business and kept focusing on land business. I kind of got distracted and went back into my my uh, old rehab and multifamily mind and saying, right, geez, right. I have this nice big chunk I can make. And so I kind of got distracted. And then next, next thing I know, all my money's gone out of my land business. And yeah, it's in a house. That's great. But that wasn't. So I got a little distracted that first year. Right. right. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I know what I was going to ask you. Do you ever do you ever, ever do the option deals? How, yes. How's that going? Do you like the options? I love oh. options. Yeah, I done. Uh, well, I used to do lease options with homes a little while. I did that for about six months, years, years ago. And then, um, like you said, we got into the options and um, with the land, and the um, and that works out good. It works out because uh, people people are open to the idea of option. When you send out a an option contract, the first thing I thought of, I'm like, people are gonna look at this and say, what the heck is this? But they call you and they do. They ask you, what is this? Right, <laughs> right. Is, right. So you call them, you get a relationship on the phone with you, with with uh, with them, and and then you uh, explain them what an option contract is, and more than half of them accept it and say, all right, sure, why not? I, you know, hey, here's a hundred dollars, uh, give me three to six month option on it, and um, I've sold a couple that way, and it's great if you have zero money. So yeah, uh, yeah. So you can you can definitely go that route, and and I actually. I do run into that sometimes. I'll, well, I'll send out mailings because I run out of money too. I, I um, you know, I build up big chunks, and then I usually go out buy more seller financing deals. And then now I look and I'm like, all right, my my funds in the bank are limited, so I can either you know get do some cash land flips or do some options, and um, either one works. So right, 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 right. yeah. Right now, I'm 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 loving options in uh, in Colorado and Nevada. After I've spent, you know, X amount of dollars in one area, then I'm like, okay, I've got enough of this. And as the, as the deals keep coming in, instead of just accepting uh, their the purchase agreement, I'll contact them back and say, okay, now that you've accepted the purchase agreement, let's let's convert this into an option because I've got too much. So I I lock it up for 95 days and then you know go from there. It's great. I, it's been really really successful. And, uh, and that way I keep my cash and uh, I mitigate my risk too because, you know, if you get into an area that's not selling well, then you've got nothing really, you haven't risked anything. You haven't risked all your cash. So um, I think I think you've got to do a combination of, of cash and options and then term deals because, you know, if you're just doing everything on terms, you're, de you're definitely going to run out of cash soon yeah. enough. Yeah. Unless, unless, of course, I mean, Joanna and I are going to talk about this in a couple of weeks in the podcast. You know, forming a syndicate, which is a, which is a little bit more complex, but um, that's another way to to handle your your uh, your cash flow situations. So uh, let's wrap this up. So I I don't want to put you on the spot, but what is your tip of the week? What would you what would you recommend as a tip for uh, for somebody? Uh, website or a tip? <laughs> well, yeah, like website or tip. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, well, website. I'll, I'll go with a website because I was prepared for that. I thought you were going to ask me that. I listened yeah, to yeah, the last that, two podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They asked me a website. Right. Uh, Agent247.com. What does Agent247.com do? Uh, basically, it'll get you lists for, for uh, either tax delinquent lists or uh, any list to get your, your business started so you can get send some offers out. So uh, for instance, you go to that you go to that website, you put in the county you want, the state, and uh, then you can break it down to even city 
and they will give you a list of all the tax delinquents in that city. Uh, so you can send out a mailer to them saying, hey, you know, here's my offer. I'll buy your piece of land. And um, you can break it even more down to assess value. And uh, it's, it's, it's cheap. It's, it's, I think it's like 20 bucks a month. And um, not all the counties have tax delinquents, but a lot of them do. I've got a lot, a lot of deals from there. I love that. I love yeah. that. Now, do you do you do that yourself, or do you have a, a virtual assistant do it? I do that myself. I the what I do, I use a VA for um, breaking the list down. Sometimes, whatever monotonous task I have, I get a VA to help me. So if it's, but I do, I do get the list myself, and then I give instructions to what what to do with that list, and, uh, and then I pay uh, ridiculously five dollars for someone to break down 200 names for me and, and go to the county website and write in the correct information for me i mean it's ridiculous how low how low price they are so that's great okay so speaking of five dollars that's going to be my my tip of the week is fi fiverr.com f-i-v-e-r-r.com you can find somebody to do almost anything for five bucks it's it's unbelievable have you gone on fiverr Yes, I, I yes I have. I've I've gone on there a few times. I've, I, I, yeah, I've yeah I've got with my kids. They love it. Yeah, yep. yeah, it's great. So Jeff, I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy, life saving day to uh, <laughs> talk to us about your land business. And you can learn more about Jeff and uh, and his property at TammyLand.com. Is that is that after your wife? Yeah, my wife's name. We started the business. Um, and we were trying to figure out a name. We said, what name? And then we were looking at some other business names, and they were like putting their first names in. I said, oh, that's not – I said, Tammy. And so we uh, put on my wife's name, TammyLand.com. That's great. That's great. So are you going to do this again with me? Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. Just uh, let me know, and, and I'll schedule my, my, my dropping my kids off at school to firefighting to coaching to you name it. And I'll, uh, I'll fit it in somewhere. Be honest with me. Do you, do you find this annoying? Go park the car. <laughs> <laughs> no i've heard it enough that no, it no no okay all right, all right. I'll, I'll practice it <laughs> yeah. i'll definitely practice it well jeff i really appreciate it and uh let's do this again and thanks for sharing buddy all right thanks for having me mark all right i'll talk to you soon right, talk to you soon thank you for listening to another episode of the land geek join us next time for more tips secrets and information that will help you succeed Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.